The body of the god king Atahualpa lay partially burned in a hastily dug ditch near Cajamarca. His empire was now in the hands of Francisco Pizarro and his brothers. On their long march towards Cuzco, they encountered the teenage brother of Huascar, Manco Inca, and placed him on the throne. Wielding power through this puppet king, the conquistadors were welcomed into Cusco as liberators rather than conquerors. The new Inca-Spanish military alliance crushed all forces within the empire that had remained loyal to Atahualpa's faction. With the massive empire now firmly in his grip and a military alliance secured with the Manco Inca, Pizarro and his brothers set about transforming Tahuantinsuyu into New Castile. Lands and lordships over the natives were handed out to Pizarro's men. Those few hundred conquistadors, many of them poor and illiterate, soon found themselves rich beyond their wildest expectations. After Manco Inca's coronation in Cusco, both leaders of the Spanish expedition would leave the city. Francisco Pizarro would go to the coast to found the city now known as Lima and Diego de Almagro, frustrated that Pizarro had been named the sole governor of Peru and furious that Pizarro had refused to share Atahualpa's ransom with him and his men, departed with 570 Spanish cavalry and foot soldiers and with 12,000 native troops. His goal was to conquer the southern part of the Inca Empire in what is now Chile. The Inca capital, Cusco, was now left in the hands of Manco Inca and Pizarro's two younger brothers, Juan and Gonzalo. Manco Inca tried to get to work rebuilding his fractured and smallpox-ridden realm, but with Juan and Gonzalo now in charge of the city, the illusion of an equal alliance between the emperor and the Pizarros quickly shattered. Juan and Gonzalo harassed Manco Inca for gold, silver and native women. They soon began to disrespect him in public, and then Gonzalo Pizarro kidnapped and raped Manco Inca's wife, Cura Oclo. Soon he was imprisoned and beaten. Manco Inca now became aware of the horrific bargain he had made for the title of Sapa Inca. Tensions had reached a boiling point. In early November of 1535, two years after the death of Atahualpa, the puppet king Manco took his first steps towards rebellion. A secret meeting of the Inca nobility was called, and Manco made a speech to his chiefs. I ask you, where did we meet them? What is it that we owe them, or which one of them did we injure, so that with these horses and weapons of iron they have made such cruel war on us? It seems to me that it would be neither just nor honest that we put up with this. Rather, we should strive with the utmost determination to either die to the last man or to kill our cruel enemies. Manco fled the city into the harsh Andes and soon the Inca war machine began to slowly creak into motion. Chasqui's runners breathlessly crisscrossed the empire, bringing word of Manco's rebellion to the native chiefs. Soon the conquistadors, now the feudal lords, were individually lured away from their palaces and manors and clubbed to death. Within months, these small-scale attacks had killed more Spaniards than had died in the entire conquest thus far. As reports of these deaths trickled into Cusco and Lima, far off in the mountains native soldiers started gathering clubs, axes, spears and halberds from their warehouses and marching across the Andes to answer the call of their emperor. The 20-year-old great-great-grandson of Pachacuti, who had served as a meek puppet for two years, was now at war with the invaders from across the sea. Like a giant blanket covering the hillsides, the immense legions of Manco converged on Cusco. Hernando, Juan and Gonzalo Pizarro were now trapped inside, along with 196 Spaniards, a handful of African slaves and Morisco women, and hundreds of native allies. Early in the morning, on Saturday the 6th of May, 1536, conch shell trumpets rang out from the mountains surrounding Cusco. A curtain of javelins, rocks and arrows darkened the sky while 100,000 soldiers, wielding massive spears and clubs, began to slowly make their way down the hillside, encircling the glittering city. 
the constant barrage forced the defenders to immediately run for cover. Inca troops poured into the city and forced the Spaniards to retreat into two buildings located in the main plaza. Manco knew from experience that Inca weapons were ineffective against Spanish armor and cavalry. It was near impossible for an Inca to kill a Spaniard in hand-to-hand -hand combat. No matter the strength behind a blow or the bravery of the warrior, stone and bronze could never pierce steel. The Spanish could only be killed if knocked from their horses or with a direct impact to the face. Manco's strategy was to tighten a noose around the city, trap the Spaniards and then overwhelm them with his superior numbers. In a panic, the Spaniards darted between the two buildings, now transformed into bunkers. Hernando Pizarro was screaming orders and doing his best to reinforce his position. But before they could even formulate a real plan, the roof of the buildings caught fire. Inca slingers and archers were firing red-hot rocks and flaming arrows into the city. The trapped Spaniards soon found themselves suffocating from the smoke. Hot ashes filled the air, broken beams fell from the ceiling, tossing up fresh burning embers. As the heat became more intense, it seemed all hope was lost, until suddenly the fire went out. Some Spaniards claim to have seen the Virgin Mary herself descend from heaven and put out the flames. The Inca chronicles report that it was the African slaves that the Spanish had stationed on the roof who put it out under a barrage of arrows and rocks. The Incas continued to heave against the Spanish defences. Unable to cut through their armour or defend against a cavalry charge, they swarmed the city and laid a noose around the precarious Spanish position. At the end of the day they had to cease the attack, barricade the streets they had taken and rest. From his command centre nearby in Calca, Manco Inca no doubt was certain that within days he would see his men storm the Spanish holdout and bring him victory. The siege dragged on, however. As months passed, new strategies had to be developed. The Inca tore apart roads and streets in order to neutralize cavalry charges. They feigned retreats down narrow alleys in order to lure horsemen into traps. Bolas, a weapon normally reserved for hunting, was introduced in order to tie up charging horses' legs. The battle for Cusco was brutal and long. Spaniards on horses charged at Inca soldiers down narrow streets, and the entire city was essentially reduced to ashes. In the city, one eyewitness wrote, the Indians waged such a fierce attack that the Spaniards thought themselves a thousand times lost. While he besieged Cusco, Manco had sent his finest general, Quiso, to tie down Francisco Pizarro, who was currently in Lima. Quiso was an excellent tactician. He had realized that attacking cavalry on a level ground was a death sentence. Inca troops could do nothing against a charge. Instead, he would use the terrain against them, only meeting the Spanish on steep hills and mountains. There he would lure them into a tight pass, block the entrances with his troops, and rain boulders down on the horses. Quiso managed to wipe out a total of four separate Spanish relief forces using these tactics, and sent Spanish weapons and armor back to his emperor at Cusco. Francisco Pizarro started to panic. He had just sent more than a hundred horsemen to their deaths at the hands of Quiso, and now had one hundred Spaniards to defend Lima. Just months before, he had total control over the Inca. Now, Cusco was besieged, his brother Yuan dead there, an army was outside Lima hunting down Spaniards, and more than a third of his forces were dead. Hearing of Quiso's unprecedented victories, Manco ordered him to proceed to Lima and destroy the city. Not to lay siege to it like he was doing back at Cusco, but to destroy it. Lima was a Spanish city. Founded near the coast to facilitate trade, and unlike Inca cities, it was built on a flat plain. Manco's excitement at Quizo's victories had blinded him to the fact that Quizo was using tactics that could not work at Lima. Ordering him to attack Lima was a grave error. Quizo assaulted the city and failed to take it. He attacked again and again, and continued to be beaten back. 
but his emperor had ordered him to take it, and Kizo knew Manco needed him back at Cusco, that he needed this city and Francisco Pizarro gone, and nothing else would be sufficient. On the sixth day of the Siege of Lima, Inca troops again poured down from the hills and marched along the flat plain towards the city, with General Kiso leading the charge, lance in hand, with his hand-selected vanguard. As he entered the city, a sudden barrage of arquebuses roared and ripped through the front line. Santiago was screamed as a cavalry charge rammed through the vanguard. As the dust settled and smoke cleared, the Inca army soon saw their general lying on the ground with a Spanish lance in his heart. The greatest general the Inca had was dead, and his army soon disappeared into the mountains. Pizarro was now free to go break the siege of Cusco. Breathless Chesky's runners arrived from across the empire. They brought unwelcome news to Manco. Quiso was dead, Pizarro was approaching, Diego de Almagro had returned from Chile, defeated but with a sizable army, and Spanish reinforcements were arriving from the north. His fortunes, only so recently extremely promising, had now taken a grim turn. He had lost, and he knew it. The ten-month-long siege of Cusco was a failure. Manco assembled his chiefs and captains, and with a solemn voice, he informed his people that he would cede his treasures, his home, his empire, and would retreat into the remote rainforest region of the empire called Vilcabamba. From there, he would try and fight another day. As Manco retreated deep into the rainforest, he brought with him the mummies of all the Sapa Incas that had ruled before him, including his father, Huayna Capac, and his great-great-grandfather, Pachacuti. From Vilcambaba, Manco waged an aggressive guerrilla-style campaign against the Spanish. His soldiers ambushed supply convoys, raided new towns, stole caches of weapons and horses, and then vanished back into the rainforest. His men learned how to ride horses, fire guns, and fashion Spanish weapons. But the population of Spaniards in Peru essentially doubled with each passing year. It became clear to Manco as he aged that survival was possible, but Tahuantinsuyu, a land of four parts together, would never be remade. His state would continue to survive in the rainforest. As Almagro died fighting a civil war against the Pizarros, as Francisco Pizarro was assassinated, while Hernando Pizarro rotted in a Spanish prison, and as Gonzalo Pizarro was executed on the orders of the king, the Inca state clung to life for decades, until eventually, in 1572, 36 years after Manco's rebellion, his son and the last Inca emperor, Tupac Amaru, was captured and executed and the empire of Pachacuti was erased. Thank you for taking this journey through the history of the Inca Empire with us. It has been a pleasure to put this series together for you. We will be continuing this series with the history of the Maya civilization, so subscribe and press the alarm bell to get notified. These videos are made possible by our brilliant patrons over at Patreon and our YouTube sponsors. Visit our Patreon to learn more about the perks. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.